I give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, which in Hebrew are the wonderful names of the Creator, our Heavenly Father I Am, which this world has named God, and His beloved anointed Son, which this world has named Jesus. I give honor, respect, and thanks to all the true, faithful, and sincere apostles, elders, prophets, and torchbearers of the nation of Israel, who have willingly endured and risked much to bring forth the truth. Thank you, brothers. In this chapter, we are continuing the conversation of judgment has begun. Judgment has begun upon the earth. We, brothers, are here to warn the nation of Israel, the nation of Israel being the so-called Negroes, the so-called Latins, Hispanics, and the so-called Native Americans. You must be comfortable with the judgments that the Father is bringing upon the earth. Remember, in the last chapter, we discussed how the beloved anointed Yahushai, our Savior, spoke in Matthew 24 and said, all these things shall come to pass. We must, as a nation, be comfortable with the Father's judgment upon this earth. Very, very important. The first scripture we're going to in this chapter is the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 13, verse 9. Behold, the day of Yahweh cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Nothing could withstand that storm, Dorian, that the Father sent upon the earth. The Bahamas were destroyed. There is no weapon that can fight against that power. Cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger. 185 mile an hour winds. Nothing can stand against that. If you take a moment to think about it, the president of Mystery Babylon, the so-called United States of America, really considered dropping a nuke on that thing because they knew how powerful it was. Judgment has begun. Let's jump down to verse 11. And I, I meaning Yahweh, the most high power, and I will punish the world, world meaning time frame, age, span of time, for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease those that call themselves God, those that call themselves Christ, and paint their images over the true images of Yahweh and his beloved anointed Yahushai, those who say that they are Israel, those that believe in their hearts that they are gods upon this earth, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. They truly believe they cannot be touched. This destruction has begun. The Father is gathering the nations as we speak to pour out his fierce indignation upon them. So we, as the nation of Israel, what do we need to do? The next scripture we're going to is the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 13. These all died in faith. This is talking about our forefathers of the nation of Israel. Good, solid men. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So in the last chapter, we discussed that a pilgrim is one who is on a journey to a sacred place. That sacred place, if you are Israel, is the gates of the new kingdom. And in order to get there, we must go through this world which is a dangerous place to fall. So our forefathers, not having received the promises, believed, believed, believed the words that Yahweh spoke through the prophets. They believed what was to come and confessed that they were strangers. We are strangers upon this earth. We don't have a country. We don't have a land. If you ask a Russian where he's from, you say, I'm from Russia. If you ask a Persian or a so-called Iranian where they're from, they'll say, I'm from Iran. Someone who's Turkish, they'll say, yeah, I'm from Turkey. But we as a nation, we say, oh, I'm from Puerto Rico. I'm from Jamaica. I'm from Guyana. I'm from Belize. No, we're from Israel. And we are serving out the last of our last captivities. And we're strangers here on this earth because it is not our kingdom yet. 
So our forefathers understood where they were. They were strangers in a strange land and they were pilgrims that they were journeying daily to make it home. Let's go now to the first book of St. Peter chapter two and verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. It's easy to get comfortable in this world as we make our pilgrimage. It's easy to take on the customs and the cultures of the other nations. But you have to remember in Leviticus 20, the father said, I have severed you from the other people. We are holy, peculiar, and chosen. We are not like the rest of the world. And we must acknowledge that. Until we are back in our kingdom, we are strangers in a foreign land. And we cannot give in to the morals and the policies and the doctrines of this current world. Because at the heart of it, it is about satisfying your flesh as often as possible, many times in abominable ways. We must continue to stay on our pilgrimage. Let us continue on. The next scripture is the second book of the prophet Esdras, chapter 8 and verse 47. The books of Esdras, again, can be found in the Apocrypha, the middle book of the Bible. This is Yahweh speaking unto Esdras. For thou comest far short, that thou shouldest be able to love my creature more than I. But I have oftentimes drawn nigh unto thee and unto it, but never to the unrighteous. If we remember what the Father spoke through the prophet Ezekiel, in Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 6 through 14, the Father found us, the nation of Israel, polluted in our own blood, and he washed us thoroughly, and he gave us love, and he clothed us, and he made us great among the nations, and then we became unrighteous. But he has been near those that are turned towards him. In this, thou art marvelous before the Most High, in that thou hast humbled thyself as it becometh thee, and hast not judged thyself worthy to be much glorified among the righteous. Meaning our only job is to be pilgrims, side by side, walking towards the kingdom, exhorting one another, building one another up, saying continue to walk, come on, we can make it, we can make it to the kingdom, together. Humbling ourselves to do the commandments and the statutes, humbling ourselves to do the laws to the best of our abilities while we are in the last of our captivity, humbling ourselves by following the lessons of our anointed Yahushai. For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time, which is now, shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. They have turned their back on the creator of heaven and earth if you are an Israelite, you've turned your back on a contract that Yahweh has made with the nation of Israel. The covenant is a contract. He made two contracts with the nation of Israel. The only nation on the earth he's done so. Many of us have said, I don't need him. Many have gone so far as to say, he don't even exist. I can do whatever I want. Many great miseries shall be done to them in the latter time. The next scripture we're going to is... The second book of the prophet Ezra, chapter 8 and verse 39. But I, I meaning Yahweh, the most high power, the creator of heaven and earth, but I will rejoice. He will be happy. He will be joyful. But I will be joyful over the disposition of the righteous. And I will remember also their pilgrimage. He will remember that we walked to the best of our abilities towards the gates of the new kingdom and we did it through this world, which is a dangerous place to fall. As if there were fire on one side, that's the second death of fire, and water on the other side. That was the first death, the great flood that killed everything on the earth, save Noah and what was in that ark. But I will rejoice over the disposition of the righteous, and I will remember also their pilgrimage and the salvation, the returning home, the gift of eternal life, the hug of the eternal father and his children, his chosen children, and the reward 
there is a kingdom waiting for the one third of the nation of Israel, the true believers, the remnant that cannot be understood. It cannot be. The reward is so great, it can't be comprehended. But I will rejoice over the disposition of the righteous and I will remember also their pilgrimage and the salvation and the reward that they shall have. Like as I have spoken now, so shall it come to pass. We must remember that the Bible is the recorded voice of Yahweh, the Most High Power. And when he has spoken something, it does not come back void, ever. We brothers don't come out here and talk about World War III and nuclear fire to scare you, but to warn you, Israel, that it is coming. And in that day, if you have not turned back unto the Father and walked away from your sins and returned to your pilgrimage, nothing can save you from judgment. There is not a force on earth that could have saved anyone on those islands in the Bahamas. Not a force on earth, not one, not one. So if you're still unsure about whether judgment has begun and whether the destruction of the evil and those who love to practice iniquity and those who have turned their back on the Father and those of Israel who have become truly comfortable here in this world, time frame, age, span of time. Let's see what else is written. The last scripture we're going to in this chapter is the book of Psalms, chapter 91, verse 7. A thousand shall fall at thy side. 2,500 people are missing in the Bahamas. That number, of course, is going to rise. But they were taken out right in front of you, Israel, right in front of you. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand. People are dying from floods and fires and famine as we speak. But it shall not come nigh thee. It shall not come near you if you are being a pilgrim, if you are on your journey in truth and sincerity towards the gate of the new kingdom of Israel. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. When you turn on the news, when you go online, you are beholding the reward. You are seeing the reward of the wicked. Judgment has begun. And if you are turned unto the Father, you will continue to watch it and it will not come near you. Why? Because thou has made Yahweh, which is my refuge. This is our forefather, King David, saying, I trust in Yahweh completely. He's my refuge. He's my safe place. Even the most high, thy habitation, you live inside the commandments and the statutes. You live inside the laws. You live inside the Bible. You live inside the covenant, the contract. You spiritually live inside of the nation of Israel. And what is the promise? There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. There are plagues upon the earth now, and they're only going to get worse and worse and worse. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he, Yahweh, the Most High Power, the Creator of heaven and earth and all that is, shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. If you can acknowledge this truth, Israel, if you can acknowledge that you, as a member of the nation of Israel, are a stranger in this world, that you are a foreigner in this world, and that you are on a pilgrimage, meaning that you are on a journey to a sacred place, and that sacred place is the new kingdom of Israel. If you can acknowledge these things, as our forefathers did in Hebrews 11, if you can acknowledge these things and turn unto the Father, this protection is for you because judgment has begun and there is no way around it. This is serious business, Israel. We as a nation must trust the Father and have no fear. We must acknowledge that these destructions must happen. We must acknowledge that this destruction must occur because the Father has spoken it and it is our way of honoring the Father. 
as his holy, chosen, and peculiar. It is our way of honoring the Father and saying, Thy will be done. Turn to the Father. Have life eternal. Receive the only protection that can withstand the wrath and the fury that the Father has begun to pour out. The choice is yours, Israel. Make no mistake about it, World War III and the nuclear destruction of America are coming. It will coincide exactly with the return of our King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Savior, High Priest and Brother, Yahweh Shai. Thus saith Yahweh. Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Wherefore, Yahweh also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Yahweh Shai every knee shall bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Yahweh Shai is Lord, to the glory of Yahweh the Father. As it is written, thus saith Yahweh, and nothing can stop it. This is a final warning, Israel. Shake off this world, remember who you are, and come home. All praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai.